Hey there and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how you can integrate ShadCN UI into your existing payload project. Now this video is an extension to our previous one where we showed you how you can integrate Tailwind CSS with payload. So in order to follow this video, it's very important that you go through the Tailwind CSS setup since ShadCN UI doesn't work without it. Now, there are two ways to install ShadCN UI. There's one manual way and there's one way where you use a CLI tool. In this video, we will use the CLI tool, but we'll adjust it a little bit so that it works with payload. But before that, there's one very important thing that we need to set up in order for this to work, which is called import alias. So the way that ShadCN UI imports components is it uses this at slash whatever component. And this doesn't work out of the box. We actually need to set up this import alias. So in order to do that, we are going to go into our tsconfig.json file. And in here, we need to adjust our path attribute. So we need to add a path, which is called at slash asterisk, which means every file basically. And this is rerouted to our source folder. So whenever we import a component by telling it add slash, this will basically check the source folder. Now, in addition to that, we also need to configure our Webpack config in payload so that it knows this path as well. So in order to do that, we need to go into our payload.config.ts file and under admin and Webpack, we need to adjust our config. Now, since this is an active repo, um, it's actually the payload Next.js tutorial repo. We've already created some Webpack configurations for Tailwind CSS as well. And now we need to extend it. The important part is under resolve alias. And down here, we need to specify at within the same path here. So since payload.config.ts is within the source folder, it's the actual directory. Now, in theory, this should be enough. However, it doesn't quite work out of the box. Um, we need to use a third party library, which is called tsconfigpaths to actually make this import alias work. So I'm going to install it by hitting npm install. And then what I will have to do is go back into our tsconfig file and under ts node, I will have to require this exact um, library. And now if we start our development server, we should be able to see that the, that the import alias works. The way we do this is let's just create a additional test.jsx. It's just a custom component that we use. And now the way we are going to import it here, so we are going to insert it in our before dashboard. And the way we import it is not through the standard way, but we're going to use at. And as you can see, VS Code has the autocomplete already, but let's see, um, at components, and now we're going to say test. And it crashes at component tests. Yeah, obviously it's slash UI, I'm sorry. Now if the, re the, the server restarts, this should work. So let's check it out. And yes, indeed, our test component shows up, which means our import alias works. Now the next step is installing ShadCN UI or configuring it. So in order to do this, I'm going to run npx shadcn UI at latest init. This uses the CLI tool to configure everything. So now we get a bunch of questions that we just have to go through. Um, you can adjust them to your preferences. 
I'm just going to go for JavaScript with the New York style slate as the base color. And now one important part is we have to specify our global CSS file. So in this case, in the last video, we created our tailwind.css file, which we import into payload right here, which is then used as our custom CSS styling file. So in this case, I'm just going to say tailwind.css. Now it also asks us if we would like to use CSS variables for colors, which I'm just going to say yes to because it's a practical way of handling your colors. We don't have any Tailwind prefix. And now we get the last question, where is your Tailwind config situated? So in theory, this is already correct since we have our Tailwind config right here. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. Okay. I'm going to say Tailwind config 2.js. Um, just to have a copy of our original one. Because what this will do is will actually overwrite some of the important configurations that we have done during our Tailwind CSS setup. So let's just do like that. And the next part is we need to configure the import alias for our components. Now you should be able to place them wherever you want. In my case, what I would like to do is I would like to have a folder in the components folder called chat cn ui okay and i basically want to put them within this folder so what i'm going to specify is i'm going to say at chat cn ui slash components and then the second import will be for the utils. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say at chat cn ui utils. Sorry, lib. I'm just going to put lib in there, lib utils. Now we won't be using any React server components. And yes, I want to write the configuration to the components file. So now it's installing all the dependencies. And now we basically have our configuration for ShatCN in the components.json file. Just a short notice, I actually messed up my import path and I should have put components here because I wanted to have it in my components folder right here. But this just put it into our source folder directly. So I'm just going to keep it there. To test our configuration, what I want to do is display a table, the data table, within our payload admin panel. So I'm going to use the CLI tool here to install it. So I'm just going to add the table component by calling npx chat cn ui at latest add. So I'm not going to specify table here because we actually need to add a couple of components. And if you don't, don't put anything here, you actually get a list of components that you can just go through and install. So what we need is first of all, a button. I'm going to select it by pressing space. We're also going to need a checkbox, um, a drop down menu, an input and uh, pagination, I think. And that should basically be it. Yeah, table, of course. Let's go with that by pressing enter. So now we should have installed all of our components in the ShatCN folder right here. So to test it out, I'm just going to copy the demo code in here and adjust our custom component or I'm just going to I'm just going to delete it and create a new one called chat table.jsx. Paste that in here. I'm going to rename the export, which is right here to chat table. And since this is a JavaScript file, it complains that we still have TypeScript in here. This works for JavaScript as well as for TypeScript. Um, obviously, I'll have to get rid of those. 
that should be it. And now if we import it into our payload config, saying chat table and restart our server, this should display our table in our admin panel. However, it has an error here. Yes, of course, I forgot to not only install the table, but we also need to install the underlying package, which is 10 stack react table that the table uses for its logic. So I'm going to install it, restart the server, and then we can check out our table. One thing that I forgot to mention, since we adjusted our imports and our alias, the demo code that I just pasted in doesn't work out of the box. As you can see here, we get the error, cannot find module at components UI button. This is because the demo code actually thinks that we're using the normal imports. So in this case, what I will have to add here and here and there and there, there as well, is our chat CN UI folder. And now if we restart the server, this should work. We are now in our admin panel and the table actually gets displayed pretty perfectly. However, there are other issues. As you can see, this looks quite a little bit strange. Also, if we go to users, for example, this table is kind of messed up. It used to be full width. And the worst part is there is no save button. It just appears if I hover over it. So those are some overwriting conflicts that are caused by the Tailwind or Shadcn uh, UI styles overwriting some of payload default component configs and styles. So if you watched our last video, you can remember that I told you to basically comment out the base import um, of the Tailwind components because those actually cause the issues with, for example, the button overwrite. So obviously I'll have to remove those or comment those out here as well. Those were added by ShadCN because otherwise I will get an error. But now as you are about to see, if we refresh, now the, those are back to normal. This looks all pretty, pretty normal. However, now our ShadCN UI component is messed up. So this is not an option. What we need to do instead is actually adjust our base components that contain a something called preflight, which is basically a reset that Tailwind does automatically to reset all the styles to make it easier for you to work across environments and make styling more, um, more normal. So what I have to do here, I just comment this in again. First of all, we can look at our two Tailwind config files and see what it overwrote. So one important part is the table block list. So this is the part that fixes our table that is currently displayed in a weird way. So if we refresh our server, the table should now be displayed correctly. Let's check this. Okay, yeah, so as you can see, they are back to full width. Now, the next step will be or would be the preflight. This is the way where we can basically disable the preflight check completely without actually disabling the base base layers that we need for our CSS variables. So let's check how this works. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, if we completely disable the preflight, our new component goes back to looking sort of weird. So this is not an option. We can't use this here if we want to use the ShadCN components and want them to look the way that they should look. So apart from that, one thing that we need to fix as well is the dark mode. This is up here. And also what we could get rid of is pages component app because that is not relevant to our payload project since everything is in the source folder. So what do we do with the preflight that makes our components look the way they should, but 
at the same time messes up other payload styling, some less important, some very important. Now, fortunately, there is a great package that you can use for this, which is called Tailwind CSS Scoped Preflight. This one basically enables you to adjust the preflight and select specific CSS properties, specific CSS selectors that you can either whitelist or blacklist from the, pre, uh, from the pre flight check. So that way they get either ignored or you only um, do the pre flight on those selectors. So let's install this. And in our Tailwind config under plugins, we will add this plugin, which is called scoped pre flight styles. I'll have to import it at the top. All right. And now we're going to specify two attributes for this plugin. The first one is CSS selector. This basically gives you the ability to have specific CSS selectors, not only classes, can be any CSS selector, and basically exclude them from the pre-flight. So in this case, what I'm going to specify here is h1, h2, h3 for now, just to bring back those large headings. And then we can specify a mode, and we're going to say accept matched. The other option would be to have matched only. So this would only do the pre-flight on those three selectors. So let's check if this works as expected. And indeed, now our H1s, H2s, H3s, so the headings here are back to normal size. So one remaining issue is that our save button doesn't appear here. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to check the exact button selector that I can use to basically exclude this from the pre-flight because all of those other buttons seem to work fine. So let's check the issues here. Um, so as you can see here, it seems like the actual background color is overwritten in our Tailwind styles, which set its sets it to a background that is transparent, which we actually don't want. So I'm just going to check here and I'm going to see that this button has an ID action save. So we can use this ID. We could also use more classes to select it. You will probably have to play around a little bit with this. Um, there might be other issues that occur uh, throughout the admin panel that you probably just have to fix one by one, because um, you can't just, like I said, uh, disable the entire pre-flight. Um, so let's do action save in here and see if this has any effect on our styling. And actually it doesn't seem to have any effect. So let's double check again. Let's put the ID at the front. Yeah, so now our save button is here again. So this is basically it for this setup video. Like I said, there is no perfect solution here in regards to avoiding conflicts with the styling, but at least for us, it seems like this uh, scope pre-flight is by far the best option. Um, obviously, if you want to just disable the pre-flight completely and adjust your styles yourself, you can totally do that. Um, apart from that, you might have to do some trial and error. Obviously, check the entire admin panel if something you know looks weird, doesn't doesn't work as expected but uh, those two should be the largest issues that need fixing. If you do have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. And apart from that, take care and see you in the next video.